Hello, and welcome to the Pinewood Derby Workshop. This workshop is being brought to you by Sam's Garage, which is located at the Saratoga Automobile Museum. In today's episode, what we're going to be doing is walking through the basic assembly techniques for any Pinewood Derby racer. In this one, we're going to finish up with a race car that looks like our flat-out fastback. We're going to have a rolling chassis that has the proper balance and ballast weights located near the rear wheels. It's all ready now for that fine paint job for some lettering from your sponsors, the driver's name, and all those little details that the Cub Scouts love to add to their cars. I'll tell you what, after looking this fella over, I think it's going to be a winner. So, why don't we just get down to the shop and take a look at how we put this together. Okay. Today we're going to have a video of how to build your Pinewood Derby Racer. What we're using here is a kit left over from last year's workshop. And let's just open it up and take a look at what's inside. First of all, there's the data sheet where you record all the dimensions for your car. The official ruler that we've used to measure our dimensions. We have the wooden block this particular car uh, we called the flat out fastback sort of a fastback shape and uh, it meets all the requirements of the, the Cub Scout size and, and wheelbase here we have a set of official uh, Cub Scout or Boy Scout wheels these particular wheels are blue they come in a variety of colors. If you buy the kit, I guess you always get black. And we have the official Boy Scout axles. Okay. In addition to that, we have a wheel shim. This is when you put your wheels on to have the equal spacing on all, all four wheels that helps in the overall performance of the car. And we have two ballast slugs or, or weights. And these are just made from 7 16 steel rod. These were measured out so that the assembly of everything here would bring you very close to the five ounces that was allowed for the race. So the first step is you take your block and you kind of look it over to make sure there are no real real bad burrs or anything like that. If you need to, you just hit it with a little sandpaper, knock off some of the rough spots. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our ballast weights in. Now the idea here is to have the center of gravity of our finished car as far back away from the front as we can get it. And so as you see, these two slugs are not the same size. So we're going to put the larger slug in the rearmost hole. And just in order to make sure this stays assembled the way we want, we're going to put a little bit of glue on the weight. Shouldn't take much because there's really not much that'll try to take it out anyway. And we press that weight. Might need to drive it home a little bit with a hammer. You want to get it down flush in case you want to put some filler on there when you make your uh, final paint job on it. Likewise, let's let's do the little shorter guy here. Yeah, just a little glue should hold that in there. 
drive it home, wipe off the glue. So there we have the first step. We have the uh, basic car body. We have the weights installed. And now we're going to use the, uh, the wheels and the official axles. We're going to place those at the pre-drill holes in the, in the car body. Now what we have here is a little, little fixture that we made up just by drilling a couple of holes at the right spacing so that we can rest the, uh, the car over top of that. Once we get two wheels on, we flip it over. We don't want to be hammered against the, uh, the wheels. So we take an axle, we slip it into the wheel, and we start it into the hole. Now here's where we use our little wheel shim. We just drop that in place right there. We have our tool that has, it's just a large nail where we've put a little bit of a divot or a cup instead of the point. And we can just sort of set that on top of there and tap this guy home. Now again, make sure you have your wheel shim in place because that's what's going to provide the proper spacing. And you should have it so that it's just snug. You don't want to drive it real tight against the shim, but just snug. You can feel a little drag on it right there. So there's, there's the first wheel. Seems to spin pretty well. Now we can repeat that process for the rear wheel here. Just slide it into the hole, get it started. Put our wheel shim in here our cupped driver aid. Okay. And again, the second wheel we have just a little bit of a drag on that. So we have those two wheels on and they're spaced pretty well. So now we turn the car over and as you see we drop it down on here. This supports the car so that when we drive these other two axles in we're not pushing against the wheels that we've already installed. So let's take wheel number three. Start it in the hole. Our wheel spacer in place and then tap. That's still a little loose, so let's just tap it. Ah, there you go, it got a little bit of a drag on it. Okay, so the last wheel. get this started there a little bit. Put our wheel spacer in. Use our driver tool. Make sure you don't lose it. Again, just a little bit of a drag. So there we have it. We have the rolling assembly for our flat out fastback racer. It's weighted. It's ready for a little bit of paint and checking the specifications using our special data sheet.